All right. So let's begin our session. Um, before we start, I would like to thank you all for joining this session. And I know a few of them and some are new faces and it's lovely to see you all here. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Madhuri Prasad and I started my career as a software engineer and I did my Montessori diploma course in birth to three. And then I started working with top schools. I have experience over five years working with children, families and different schools. So before we start, I would like to first ask all of you which phase you are in, in terms of toileting, because this session is about how you can make your child independent to use the toilet. So I would like to, you know, ask you a few questions. And if you will see, you have a reactions in your settings on Zoom and raise your thumbs up or hand um, according to your stage of where your child is. So who all have your children already toilet trained fully and are only wearing pants and no diapers? If you can show your reactions. Great, great Jaya. Great Ishita. Anyone else? Oh, lovely Lavanya. Okay. Um, who are in the transition transitioning phase of uh, you know moving the ch your children from diaper to underwears? Okay, Chandra. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I can't see your names, so yeah. I see a few hands. Um, what about those who are still thinking of transitioning your children from diaper to underwears? Mm -hmm. Please raise a thumbs up. Okay, okay. And how many of you are anxious, anxious about, you know, this entire process of toileting? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Great. I see a few hands over here as well. Great. So before we start the session, um, I would like to let you know that this is a 30 minute session and I would try to finish my session between 15 to 20 minutes. Um, also, you will be on mute during this entire presentation. And if you have any questions or concerns, please type it in the chat and i would like to address it or uh, we will you know unmute you uh, when i'm done with my session and then we can have a um, conversation based on how much time we have left in those 30 minutes you know time window if at all we are not able to address all the questions i will be sharing my contact details by the end of the slide and you can email me or whatsapp me uh, personally as well and i will reach out to you giving back your answers yeah, so shall we begin? Okay, so I'm going to share my slide. Give me a second. Okay. 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 So I, I, I believe you can see my slide now. Yeah. So here we are talking about how to make your child toilet independent, right? Now, First, we must understand what does toileting mean? So toileting 
is a process of preparing your child to use the toilet for both bowel and bladder release. There is a muscle called sphincter muscle. It's basically, you know, a muscle that controls your open and uh, open and closed system. So uh, when you are releasing your bowel, the muscle controls it. And that is when you realize if you are passing, you know, if you are urinating or you are passing your poop. So this muscle does not develop in a young child. It takes around, you know, it starts developing by the time the child is around eight, nine months old. However, it is fully developed when the child is 18 months old. Now, why toileting is important? Toileting is an important developmental milestone, right? Um, just like a child begins to crawl and then walk, and then, you know, when you see your child starting to eat by themselves, so you have the, that developmental milestone of weaning. It is similar, you know, um, toileting also is a developmental milestone when the children slowly begin to, you know, show signs that I am independent and I can take care of my body. And what is happening over here is that the child is, you know, developing a lot of gross motor movement. How? When they are pushing their pants down, pulling their pants up, right? Um, they're also, you know, learning to flush, turn on the tap, washing their hands. So a lot of gross and uh, gross and uh, fine motor movements are happening. And as as much as they are practicing, refinement happens, right? And the more they are using the toilet, the more they are becoming self-aware of their body, isn't it? The more you are, you know, uh, exercising your body part, the more you are using your muscles, the more you are using your language, you are aware what you want, what is your need, what do you want to do at that moment. So it helps you become self-aware. Language, toileting is, an, you know, one of the most beautiful opportunity to have language when the child wets themselves. Oh, look, you have wet yourself. So let's go use the toilet. And then all the language where we are sitting with the child, talking to the child, and then we are showing them how the, you know, color changes in the toilet, right? The white water, the, you know, colorless water changes into yellow color, or they can see their poop. So you're talking about it, then you are flushing. So, so much vocabulary is building when you are giving them names of different things around. When they are using the tap, let's turn it this way, a language. So there is so much of interaction and that just not helps in the language development of the child, but is it is also helping in bonding between you and your child, right? And the more the child is, you know, de developing this gross motor, fine motor, and then becoming self-aware, they're also becoming independent. The more the child is becoming independent, the more their self-esteem raises and they become a confident adult as they grow because they know that, you know, come what may, I can take care of myself. I can do it. I'm capable. Right? Now, there are three pillars that are required for independence. The first one is prepared adult. Then we have a prepared environment. We need to have an environment which is ready for the child and the child himself. You know, these are the important stakeholders which are, you know, supporting the independence, the autonomy of the child. So let's see what a, what a prepared adult should be like. First, the child, the prepared adult should be positive. They should have, they should emanate a lot of positive attitude towards the child. They should have this trust that, you know, my child can do it, right? They should give a lot of opportunities for child, this, is, this child to develop this autonomy. And when you are giving these opportunities for the child to do things by themselves, you are also showing this child that I believe that you are competent. I believe that you are capable. So giving these opportunities to this child to develop autonomy is one of the critical aspect of being a prepared adult. Now, um, observation skills. I think uh, we all uh, parents automatically, you know, become very good in our observation school skills <laughs> as soon as we have child coming in our life. The reason being, you know, the moment the child cries, I'm sure you 
automatically know whether the child is cranky because they are hungry or they are sleepy or they are just too tired isn't it you the moment you see the body starts you know the baby is dancing the child is doing everything but still the body you know the way he is keeping his body tight you already know that the child is really under pressure to use the toilet isn't it so we already have observation skills it's just that we need to structure this observation we need to plan our your routine in such a way that you know these observations will support the child in their independence right it is good to have observation skills but it is even more important to have a routine based on our observations because that is how we can support this child and that you know based on this observation skill what we are doing is we are preparing a right environment for this child so that the child is successful in whatever he is doing right now for this child to use the toilet they, there should be a physical readiness how would you observe this child's physical readiness the first thing that you start noticing is that there is longer gaps between their diaper change and you know uh, when the child goes to sleep after the child is awake you will see that um, sometimes you know uh, the diaper was not wet at all it was absolutely dry so probably you know the child can stay longer without using the toilet and that is when you can start your routine in a way that helps him to go to the toilet before the bedtime right um also and it is very common you would have seen that children you know either go hide themselves in a private place or they are you know making this this face trying to squat and you know uh, putting their entire body pressure for poop right so you will see this happening i have seen it in my daughter <laughs> so i'm sure i mean most of you would uh, you know resonate with this experience pretty much um uh, sometimes you would also see that even for that matter a baby um who is 6 8 months old if you have a routine with the baby you know send taking them to the toilet i have seen my nephew um they take the uh, they take my nephew to the toilet before uh, he goes to sleep and he is around 6 months old and um when he wakes up again they take him to the toilet so uh, the moment he is awake he starts crying because uh, he doesn't want to wet himself he is crying because he is asking somebody to come and take him to the toilet so you will see that right um then you will also see again this i can tell you from my personal experience that um, you know when i we will be traveling and my daughter by then was uh, pretty much comfortable using the toilet um still when we would go out we will put her in on diapers and uh, whenever she will feel the pee pressure she will say no remove this diaper i just want to use the toilet so these are the you know uh, signs that tell you that the child is physically ready for toilet learning i would never say training because training becomes very regimented but it is more of learning because the more the child is learning the more the child is becoming self aware so now let's see what you know toilet toilet learning includes you will see that even as an adult um there is a certain sequence before and after you know there is a process before and after we sit on the toilet seat and finish our job right so we need to undress ourselves then only we can sit and once we are done we need to dress back and then we need to flush then we are washing our hands so there is a process and this entire process is when uh, you know the child is using their entire body and that helps in their gross motor and fine motor development so the first step is of course you can see here undressing uh, or dressing right and then sitting on the toilet seat then flushing the toilet and then washing the hands going back and then you know putting on the clothes again so now tell me is your home prepared for toilet learning so let's see what space do we need for a child who doesn't walk as yet we need a changing station and how does a changing station look like um a changing station will have a small bed for the children to you know put them on and then change themselves and then all the necessary requirements which can be napkin their underpants um the tissue um even even a source of water 
um, towel, their clothes, right? So yeah, these are the things that are required on near the changing station. When the children begin to walk, and this is applicable for children who are crawling as well, uh, underwear. Now, children who are in diaper, it is good to transition them first into training pants. Well, uh, 10 years ago, I was not aware of uh, training pants. So what I did with my daughter was I used to have these normal cotton underwears and I had cut, you know, big napkins into small pieces and then make it like a pad and then put it underneath or stitch it in my daughter's underwear. And uh, I would let her wear because it prevents leak. It prevents the leakage. So not as much, but definitely it does. So you can start transitioning your child from diapers first to training pants. Once the child is a little bit aware of, you know, control over the pee or the poop, you can switch them to cotton underpants. And again, many a times because children will be in that phase where they may or they may not wet themselves which means that accidents can happen and if you have carpet they may wet the carpet right so you can have waterproof nappies which you can you know put um, above this cotton underwear again to prevent the leakage bottom wear please ensure that the clothing the bottom wear especially should be such that it is helping in exercising their body and not really hindering in their independence. So something which has loose elastic so that, you know, it is easy for them to, you know, pull it down, you know, push it down or pull it up. Um, if it is denim and the fabric is very tight for children to remove is, is very challenging. Or if it is a dungaree, you, you, I mean, it will become another activity rather than, you know, doing this toilet learning experience. So they will not, they will forget about uh, this entire experience of toilet learning and the focus will be in removing the buttons and, you know, just removing the pant by the time the child would have done the job in their pant itself. Yeah. Toilet station. So there are two kinds. One is potty chair. And the other is potty seat. Now, I have spoken to many experts across and I, I found out, I would think that, you know, children will start toileting by the time they are one and above. But when I spoke to people and their experiences, I have also come across children who use the toilet as soon as they can sit. So it can be around seven, eight months as well. And if they, they can, then why not give them potty chair? Because, you know, they need a place to sit where they can use the strength of their thigh, their leg, right? So body chair is such that it makes them sit comfortably, unlike uh, the potty seat. Potty seat is good for a toddler who is around 18 months and above. But if you are starting very early, potty chair is what will be good. Having said this, please ensure that potty chair should also be stationed either in the toilet area or if toilet area is too far from your living area and the child spends most time over there, I would say have one corner designated just for them to go use the potty chair and come back. Because eventually what happens, if you leave the child to use the potty chair just like that, it becomes a riding toy for them. So have a stationed place for potty chair and potty seat, of course, you know, is already, you know, on the potty seat. So yeah it has a station itself cleaning up stations now cleaning up station should be also very close to the toilet area where uh, we need two kind two boxes or two bins two laundry bins which will have which has one bin having um, the soil clothes and one bin have having the wet cloth now when the children are wetting themselves we need to point there and let them help in removing their pant, undressing their pant and then put it in the wet bin and if they have soiled themselves they need we need to show them that you know the poop goes in the toilet because you know in our uh, family system generally many of the things for children definitely disappear magically you know they pooped there is a, the, the poop is in the pant and then the 
the uh, the sequence of where the poop goes is just mag magically disappeared and the child only knows that they they have to wash themselves clean themselves up and then go and dress themselves right so they need to see that and then that soil pan goes in the bin with the soil clothes bin right so we can label it or have two different colored bins for children to identify easily and then again we need to have clothes for wipe wiping as i said there should be a logical sequence and not really uh, things should be magically disappearing so children should be you know easily um, when when they are wetting themselves it is important for them to come and mop wipe wipe that urine by themselves because if they are not seeing it happening then again they will never want to go and use the toilet it's a, it's a logical consequence you have wet the floor we need to clean it and it also gives them a sense of cause and effect something has happened and it needs to be corrected that helps in building their cognitive development now we need a tray with sanitization items okay so you can have all the things that are required for your uh, hygiene in that tray you can have the sponge the napkins the sanitizer uh, soap and you can have that tray uh, readily available for children to access okay now we need a chair for children to sit if you are making them stand you will see that the entire job of dressing and undressing is done only by you because children find it very difficult to remove their pants especially young children will find it very difficult to remove their clothes by themselves okay so we need to make them sit and then it becomes easy for them to push their pant down or pull the pant up because their bum is resting so have a child size chair for them to easily sit where their legs are reaching the floor and not dangling step stool is an important tool for children's functional independence so have step stool near the wash basin if you are using a toilet seat the potty seat have it in you know around the pot and also keep it in other areas of access so if you have the step stool you can use it when you are uh, you know making the child stand and flush the toilet a low toddler closet shelf so you we need to have a small shelf and or if you have a drawer or if you have a wardrobe have their clothes on the bottom of the shelf so that it is easy for them to access and ensure that you have not more than three choices at one time because it is very overwhelming for children to choose from many options now when can we collaborate with the children because obviously children do not have the skill to do the entire thing by themselves and if we leave them to do i mean we see that the children can go and use the toilet does not mean that we leave them to do everything by themselves that kind of discourages them more than encouraging because um, then they feel like oh, sometimes they feel like i can do sometimes they may not so and and when they are not able to reach certain things it becomes very difficult for them to persistently and continuously practice it so collaboration is the key to begin with and encourage them motivate them to do this job by themselves further so for a crawling baby you can see you can put the baby you know make them uh, lie on the bed and uh, here if you can see the child is crawling so he wants to move away so the bed is very close to the window he is watching outside and the father is changing their changing the nappy and the conversation is also happening along uh when the children begin to walk then you can make you know you can help them with dressing and dressing i think the picture is self explanatory while climbing on the step stool because if you are making them sit on the potty seat let them climb then they need to turn themselves and then sit right so that needs a little bit of collaboration because they are still not coordinated enough again you can use uh, support them when they are flushing because flushing is again a skill and it needs some muscle strength so you need to collaborate over there and then you need to stay close to the wash basin while the child is washing their hand and you know uh, intervene as and when it is necessary mopping yes mopping can become a, again another fun game 
but what we want to show them is a cause and effect so we definitely need to collaborate so that you know the child exactly knows what to be done after we have mopped the floor and then put it in the wet bin yeah. now there are stages of active toilet learning so the first stage if you will see is when the child is unaware and they won't sit anywhere when invited they will just go wherever and then they will pee themselves and they will be moving around in the house the second stage is when the child sits but doesn't go when invited so they will if you ask if you make them sit on the potty seat they will sit but that's it neither will they pass the urine or the poop they will just sit sit and then they will move away the third stage is when the child will be sitting for toileting and they go when we tell them to go but they will not initiate by themselves because that requires a lot of knowledge of what the toilet is for and the last and the final stage is when the child begins to initiate using the toilet by themselves and that requires a lot of self-awareness. How can we achieve this final stage? So we need, we have, need to have certain characteristics as an adult to reach this place. No. Yeah. If you can mute yourself, we should know, it will be helpful. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, what are the required characteristics as an adult? First is being patient, tolerant, and understanding. Being non-judgmental. No negative language. Oh, look, you did it again. Or a facial expression. Oh my God, he's pooped again in his pantry. Imagine the face that I'm showing. If the child sees it, how? what will it do to their self-esteem? They will feel like, oh, I'm good for nothing probably, right? So avoid making those facial expressions. Avoid using those negative language, which will not encourage, rather discourage them. Freedom within limits. It's very, very critical for the you know child's autonomy because um we often often we you know misunderstand freedom with letting do them do whatever or you know follow the child means letting them do whatever they want but there are certain limits so if the child has wet themselves and it, and is either playing with a sibling or uh, engaged in an activity we need to set a limit saying that i understand that you were playing or i understand that you are doing this activity but first we need to change ourselves and then we will move we will come back and we'll start playing so that kind of limit if we are setting is when children start understanding then that come what may i have to you know do this because this is part of my responsibility and consistency is the key and i can you know i i mean it's too too difficult to say anything without consistency can work i mean i cannot say less it's just you know there is no way anything can substitute consistency we are where we are because we have been consistent we have been practicing what we are doing so consistency is the key whether you want your child to reach to a place or you are doing it for yourself but consistency is the only way you can help the child become independent in whatever you you know are trying to do with the child and definitely with toilet learning as well avoid rewards and praises because eventually what happens the child um, you know when reward you are giving them rewards then rewards become more important than learning the socially appropriate behavior right and uh, then they become they are very smart children are very smart so they may find various unexpected ways to manipulate us so be mindful of that when you are giving them rewards or praises power of language use right language as i have said before but how to give that language first we need to get down to the child's level and make eye contact while talking then you need to describe the matter of fact as an oh i see you dancing looks like you need to use the toilet let's go avoid statements like as i said oh you have wet yourself or i don't understand when will you learn to use the toilet right so these are again the negative language so try to refrain from that use statements instead of questions 
why because if you you know children are in that phase where um, uh, the sensitive period or you know the time when they are um, ready for toileting they are also in a critical period where they are learning to say no so if you ask them do you want to use the toilet they may say no and that is what you don't want right so just say matter of fact saying it's time to use the toilet do you want to go jumping or walking right and as i said freedom within limits so we need to just give clear limits saying that we need to use the toilet before we are going out or we need to use the toilet before we go to bed right so the next slide is more about the common questions that generally i mean most of the families will be facing um so i would like to you know try to answer those questions before we move to our question and answer section so the first question is how long does the process of toileting take well i would like to let you know that each child is different and it will take um, you know each child may take different you know time period to learn this process of toileting so we need not be hard or be competitive with our friends and peers and relatives and not get under pressure and force the child to do something that they are not ready for instead believe in the process that child will get there and give them enough time to develop this awareness about toilet so for that we need to be very calm and very very unhurried we should try to avoid being rushing and if at all we feel because we all are humans and sometimes definitely we feel like oh my god where am i stuck so take a deep breath calm down because we also have our own baggages and sometimes it's it, it is very frustrating sometimes you have sleepless nights so you know um calm down just give yourself some time and then get back to it but trust in the process it's a natural process it's a natural path of child's development and they will get there when they are ready it's just our consistency our trust in them which will help them reach there we just need to support accordingly and follow them with all the characteristics that is required as an adult to support them is the toilet learning gender specific which means the question basically is like you know uh, the girls sit on the toilet whereas generally the boys stand right so um do we uh, should we do it that way or let both of them sit just the way it is so i would say that it is okay for both boys and girls to sit and use the toilet because right now for children as i said they need to turn and then they need to aim using the penis especially for boys um it takes a lot of understanding for all of that because they are still building their cognition so it is easy for them to sit having said this when they sit it is possible that even then a bit of urine may come out which is okay we can handle it patiently but i think they will be more successful if they are sitting and using the toilet both girl and boy do we go back to diapers if there are a lot of toilet accidents um i would give you an example say for example if a child uh, knows that the moment uh, she rolls on the floor and starts throwing tantrum and asking for the cookie you give in and you say okay fine have it your way and i'll give you the cookie the child has get the pulse and the child repeats it every every time right to get their way done so if the child is not using the toilet and urinating outside i would suggest to follow the process rather than going back and putting them in diapers in fact it is good to remove the diapers once they can use the toilet by themselves because the moment there is no choice it becomes easy for you and for the child also to follow the process because they know there is no option left isn't it and um, be consistent that is most important be consistent how to deal with night time or nap time bed wetting now uh, this is one of the major concerns concerns that most parents face and um, let's start it this way when we wake up in the night 
uh, we exactly know or, or even our old children when they wake up in night they go use the toilet come back and sleep right because they know that they have gotten up for certain objective they finish it they come back and they go to sleep now why why are we so scared with this young child waking up in the night and using the toilet first we must think about that okay now if we are waking this child up uh, how should we address because the child might cry and how what is our approach when the child starts crying you we i would say that and you would notice also that when the child starts crying we immediately change them into you know a fresh di- a fresh nappy or fresh diaper and then either we feed them or we pat them or and soothe them to sleep so the more we are doing this the more the child will be crying and the more you are getting your sleepless night because instead of completing the routine you got an involved in child's demand so be aware of that first second um try to avoid um too much lot of liquid before sleeping so milk um if at all you are giving water give them small sip of water and um if you are giving them milk better to give it in the evening rather than giving them before sleep um what else can you do yes um have a good routine in the night so maybe you can just ha- set a alarm and take them to the toilet and then get them back and sleep off yes it is a little tedious in the beginning but once we were consistent it works so with me what had happened when my daughter was 10 months old um what i had done was i had put a you know a waterproof sheet underneath her bed she, you know bed and um, in the night i would check if she has wet herself because i would put her in the nappy the cotton nappy so she would wet herself once in the night i would change her and uh, she would be sleeping and then i will go back to sleep eventually what happened and i will remove the you know uh, waterproof sheet as well and i will put uh, you know put a fresh one underneath so eventually what happened is the entire process um, took me around 3 months and then because she was aware of this sense of wet and dry even while she was asleep eventually when she started feeling restlessness and you know when your body body you know baby starts moving right so you exactly know what is happening with the baby so um, you just you know take them either to the toilet or uh, help them you know uh, with changing but i would definitely re- ask you to refrain unless and until it is a medical issue if there is a medical issue please uh, consult your pediatrician or any health professional or if it is taking too much toll in your personal life then follow your own routine but these are certain things that really work and um, if it does not please let me know and maybe we can try other strategies uh, you know further for that here is my contact you can contact me whenever you want 